Madam Deputy Speaker, uh, since the uh, principal creation of this political state in 1707, not through the Union of Crowns in, I believe, the 1603, 1603 yep. 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 between the nation of Scotland and England, and, of course, its subsequent expansion through the Acts of Union of 1800 with the nation of Ireland, and subsequent changes uh, through the Articles of Agreement for a Treaty between Great Britain and Ireland, uh, signed on the 6th of December 1921, as well as the creation um, of the three devolved administrations, Wales, Northern Ireland and, of course, Scotland. There can be no doubt, and I think there is agreement, that the political structure of these islands and the political relationship <coughs> between this present political state and, yes, even through the Good Friday Agreement with the Irish state, is a fluid and ever-changing story. Therefore, it should come as no surprise, Madam Deputy Speaker, that this debate should be brought to the floor of the House tonight. Indeed, the premise of the sovereign rights of the Scottish nation, founded in its citizens, is an agreed reality, given that this House itself recognised the position through the right of the Scottish nation to participate in the referendum of 2014. Uh, the former Right Honourable Member actually for Finchley went even further. In their memoirs, The Downing Street Years, the former Premier, who I never thought I would quote, <coughs> was clear. The members opposite should listen. If, and that is the Tory party, sometimes sees English, seems English to some <coughs> Scots, that is because the Union is inevitably dominated by England re by reason of its greater population. The Scots, being in a historic nation, not mine, not my words, with a proud past, will inevitably resent some expressions of this fact from time to time. No. As a nation, they have an undoubted right to na national self-determination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thus far, they have exercised that right by joining and remaining, and in my words, even in 2014, remaining in the Union. But back to the Right Honourable Member for Finchley again. Should they determine on independence? As, and in, no English party or politician would stand in their way, however much we might regret their departure. There will be many in this chamber, including myself, uncomfortable at giving a quote from the former Right Honourable Member for Finchley. And I think that's in all sides. Yet the Baroness's quote, the late Baroness, this quote illustrates the reality of the constitutional position of this existing political state. The reality of the claim, the right, the claim of right, and I must say written in 1988, is another example of the expression of that self-evident truth, acknowledging as it does, as it does, the sovereign right of the Scottish people to determine the form of government best suited to their needs. It is a principle well versed and affirmed in ancient right that neither monarch or parliament, not one individual or a select collective has dominion over the people. That is the nation and that is Scotland. Yeah. Now, more than ever, Madam Deputy Speaker, the importance of at least Scottish constituency MPs, and I would be grateful if there is a division this evening, to see members from across the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, that are reaffirming that long-held ancient principle is critical, given that the nation of Scotland, majority, and I must say my own constituency included, one which also voted for the liberation and regaining of the sovereignty of the nation of Scotland. Yeah, yeah. It has now been dragged out of the family of European nations. But just some one critical facts in terms of centralisation, in terms of Scotland. 
It should also, in terms of historical narrative, be reminded to members in this House, for those who have not been in local government in Scotland, that in, 19, in the last reform of local government in Scotland was, of course, led by the present Government of the United Kingdom, yeah. in which it rearranged yeah. the local governance of Scotland. Yeah. And this, since its premise, since it became, Madam Deputy Speaker, the Government of Scotland through the devolved settlement, the present Scottish Government, which set out the Concordat and existing relationships with local yeah, government, yeah. Yeah. supported the length and breadth of Scottish local government through COSLA. Yeah. For those members who do not know what COSLA means, it is the Convention of Scottish Local Authorities. Yeah. But I am not going to take up more time, Madam Deputy Speaker, but on this basic principle. This place, no matter how much members love it, should never seek to limit those constitutional realities, whether we agree with them or not. And that this place must clearly understand that no matter what is said or done, Scotland is today and forever a nation, a distinct, proud, historic nation, free, free and able to direct its governance and destiny. Yeah. 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 Yeah.